the next president of the United States, Joe Biden. Folks, it's still early, but things are looking awful, awful good. Well, more than 30 years after he first ran for the presidency, things are looking up for Joe Biden. A CNN poll last week put him 14 points ahead of President Donald Trump, and with just five months to go to the election in November. The Trump campaign called the poll totally biased. But if you do believe their survey, this election is Biden's to lose. And that's not out of the question. He's by far the more popular candidate amongst black Americans, but scored a massive own goal last month when he said, If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Well, that upset a lot of people, as did his reluctance to apologize for his tendency to touch women and girls in a way that some find unsettling. We'd like an apology. Well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm... And then there's his age. At 77, he doesn't like to be challenged about his mental and physical abilities. But is it a legitimate question? And you want to check my shape on, let's do push-ups together here, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. Let's take it on the And speaking of running, who will be his running mate? He's pledged it will be a woman, but which one? We'll discuss all of the above with our guests in a moment, including the popular YouTuber and cultural commentator Anthony Brian Logan, plus a Democrat politician John Eves, who's met Joe Biden a couple of times, says he's a very nice man, but past his prime. But first this very short summary of Joe Biden's very long road to the presidency. After conceding just last weekend that no one knows me, Senator Joseph Biden of Delaware today became the fifth Democrat to declare he's seeking the party's presidential nomination. For a decade led by Ronald Reagan, self-aggrandizement, has become the full-throated cry of this society. I've got mine, so why don't you go get yours? The quality of our education, the joy of their play. The quality of their education, or the joy of their play. I did not know that was a Robert Kennedy quote. My mistake. I am running for president. You are I am running for president. I am running for president. Okay, Thank is that your official announcement? No, I've announced it 27 times. The American people don't give a darn about any of this stuff that's going on up here. Even if they didn't have one of those subprime mortgages, things are looking bad for them. Joe Biden was soundly bested by Barack Obama. Biden ended his campaign. But any lingering hard feelings melted away as Biden stood with Obama to be part of the Democratic Party's ticket. I searched for a leader who was ready to step in and be present. And that man is Joe Biden. A big story in the race for 2020. Joe Biden officially announcing he's in. If I'm going to be able to beat Donald Trump in 2020, it's going to happen here. Yeah. It's going to happen here. Former Vice President Joe Biden has won a decisive victory in the South Carolina Democratic primary. Super Tuesday really delivered on the super. Joe Biden surging to victories in nine states. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. <laughs> Democratic voters gave Joe Biden a clean sweep in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona. In the race for the White House, Joe Biden is officially the Democratic Party nominee for president. Well, that's the big question. Is this going to be Joe Biden's year? Let's bring in our two guests. And in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we have the popular YouTuber and cultural commentator, Anthony Brian Logan. And on Jacksonville, uh, Florida, we have John Eves, who is a, a Democratic a politician who recently had a go at running for Congress himself. John, I'd like to start with you. Why is it that uh, on this third occasion, uh, Joe Biden appears to have clinched the Democratic Party's nomination? So two reasons, Matt. Number one, 
South Carolina save Joe Biden's presidential uh, bid, specifically the African-American vote. They rewarded Joe Biden for his tremendous loyalty that he displayed when he was vice president under President Obama. Black folks love President Obama, but we also feel that Biden was very loyal, he was very supportive, and he also helped to implement uh, Obama's agenda. But the second reason is the women vote. The women vote in the South as well as across the nation. Uh, in cities, women, women, and in the suburban areas, women, along with African Americans and the Latinos, are spelling the difference in terms of our support from pre for vice presidential um, or presidential candidate Joe Biden. So that's the difference maker today. You know, I, I ask about enthusiasm, the, the deep enthusiasm for Joe Biden or not, because frankly, Barack Obama only came out and supported him once everyone else had dropped out of the race. And even then it was by, by a tweet, wasn't it, on April the 14th. And by that time, even Bernie Sanders had dropped out, leaving him the last man standing. Well, I wouldn't take that as non-support of, of Joe Biden. I think that President um, Obama sort of played a conservative role in terms of sitting back. He's a statesman figure. He had a chance to see the, uh, the dynamics of their presidential primary roll out. And so I think he was pretty wise. And he wanted the American people to, or at least Democrats, to really weigh in and make the decision. So I think that his timing was well, well done. And I think that now he is going to carry um, the uh, help carry Biden over the finish line in terms of victory. Anthony Brian Logan, uh, John is making the point that uh, Biden's uh, presidential bid uh, was saved in South Carolina by the African-American vote. Do you think that he deserves to be well supported amongst African-Americans? No, I don't think so. Once you look at his record, once you go all the way back to Delaware as a senator for almost, what, 40 years, when he was under Barack Obama as a vice president, it's not looking very good. Back to 94, he was the author of the crime bill that Bill Clinton apologized for. He said we went too far, we shot over the top, we did too much. Then when they asked Joe Biden, hey, do you apologize for 94 crime bill that locked a lot of black men specifically up at a disproportionate rate? He was like, nope, no, I don't. Matter of fact, a lot of your black leaders wanted it, it's not my fault. So he pretty much just passed the book no responsibility. And then back in the 70s, he was against integration. The Democratic Party purport themselves to be the party of civil rights and integration and desegregation, but he was adamantly against it. He actually built coalitions with segregationists back in the 70s when he was in the Senate. Okay, so I don't really see anything that is positive from Joe Biden. He doesn't really deserve all the support that he's getting. He's only getting the support because he was next to Obama for eight years and they know who he is. Aside from that, he has done nothing at all for the black community to deserve or to be deserving of their vote. Now, you mentioned the 1994 Clinton crime bill. Uh, Joe Biden was so proud of it that he actually called it on many occasions the Biden crime bill. What was so wrong with it, in your opinion, Anthony? Well, I mean, a lot of black men specifically were locked up at a disproportionate rate for the whole crack versus powder thing. You know, if you had uh, crack cocaine on you, you were sentenced at a much higher rate than if you just had the powder version of the same drug. I mean, it was devastating. People have apologized for it. It, it has really left a mark. People in my family have been locked up as a result of that bill. People are still in jail from the early 90s from that particular bill. And Donald Trump is a guy that is freeing them. Alison Marie Johnson was one of them. She was just answering phones for a drug organization. Was she doing wrong? Yes. She should have gone to jail, absolutely, but the, what, 30, 40, however many years sentence, life sentence people are getting for the drugs are, are just way too much. And if you're going to be sentenced for a drug crime, at least let it be equal, okay? The Democratic yeah. Party, they say that they're the, the, the friend of the black community, but yet their rules and their policies are hurting us at a really high rate. So I don't really see how they are our friends. John, does he take the African-American vote for granted? And I, I ask you that because he was on a very popular African-American radio show uh, called The Breakfast Club, and he said if you have, well, let's quote him directly, um, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Now, a lot of uh, African Americans took umbrage at this, saying who is he to define whether they're black or not? 
Listen, Matt, uh, Joe Biden makes numerous gaffes. You know, in other words, he says things that, that are not um, the right thing to say. But I certainly believe that his heart is in the right place. Listen, I've met Joe Biden on several occasions. He's a very personable person. He's a person that's sincere. He's genuine. Everyone thinks of him as their favorite uncle. And so every now and then he will make some gaffes. And I think you should uh, count it to his head and not his heart. And I do believe that black people in general are very forgiving. And again, I want to hit hard that he was loyal to President Obama. And it wasn't just a, a yes man beside him. But Joe Biden did, in my opinion, some good things to support President uh, Obama, as well as help to champion some legislation that I think uh, is good for the American people and black people in particular. Anthony, were you offended by that remark? No, I wasn't offended, nor was I surprised. That's pretty much par for the course when you're talking about a Democratic Party. I get that kind of talk all the time for being a conservative from that side of the aisle, or you're not really black, you're Uncle Tom, you're all this and that and the third. That's pretty much what they do. So I was just like, yep, that's Joe Biden. That's pretty much the guy that I know. And that's not really a gaffe. That's how he feels. I mean, how many times must he come out and say things and or do things against black people before we just say, you know what, that's just who he is. That's what he's going to do. The Democratic Party in general been doing, doing the same thing for a long time. He was a vice president for eight years under Barack Obama. Why didn't they do anything about uh, police reform or anything like that? They may have, you know, had some little uh, uh, investigations, you know, little studies, but it didn't do anything concrete. People are still asking for it right now in the year 2020. So what's really going on with that? This guy has not really done much. All that he's done is just be the vice president for eight years. You're in the Senate for 40 years. Where is your accomplishments? Where is your claim to fame? All that he has accomplished are negative things, if anything. Let's look at another issue surrounding Joe Biden now, um, how he treats women. We know that eight women have accused him of touching them inappropriately. Uh, the most serious accusation coming from Tara Reid. She was an assistant for him in his Senate office back in 1993. Last year, she claimed Joe Biden touched her inappropriately and later said he sexually assaulted her. Mr. Biden was questioned about that during a probing interview with NBC. Stacey Abrams uh, said during the Kavanaugh hearings, I believe women, I believe survivors of assault should be supported and the voice is heard. Kirsten Gillibrand tweeted, do we believe women? Do we give them the opportunity to tell their story? We must be a country that says yes every time. They now both support you. Nancy Pelosi falls into this category, too, as well as many other leaders in the Democratic Party. Are women to be, be believed? Are women to be believed unless it pertains to you? <laughs> Look, women are to be believed, given the benefit of the doubt, if they come forward and say something that is ex that they said happened to them, they should start off with the presumption they're telling the truth. Then you have to look at the circumstances and the facts. And the facts in this case do not exist. They never happened. John, is it the case that Democratic politicians have a double standard? Uh, one for, say, President Donald Trump, and uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, when he was being accused of improper conduct by Christine Blasey Ford, and another set of rules, another standard for their own. I don't agree with that. I, I believe that whenever a woman makes an allegation of uh, impropriety, harassment, or assault, we, as people in general, we should take it very seriously. I believe that the Democratic Party takes it seriously. A large portion of the Democratic base consists of women. And so we take it seriously. I think this issue that was raised, I think that it lost its steam, not because of lack of democratic uh, engagement, but I think that there was some scanty evidence and conflicting testimony that were offered by the person who was making the allegation. Uh, I believe that um, whenever uh, there is a, an allegation that's made, uh, we as Democrats take it just as seriously, no matter what, whether the accused okay. is a Democrat or Republican. The, the whole thing with Brent Kavanaugh was crazy. He was accused by Christine Blasey Ford and some other people. I mean, just ridiculous claims from back when he was very young. They were taken as fact, for the most part, by the mainstream media. They were trying to prevent him from becoming a Supreme Court justice based on allegation. Now, my thing is, okay, if anybody's, you know, alleged of a thing, you research it, you investigate it, and see what's going on. Is it true? Is it false? What's happening? 
you don't just assume right away that they're guilty and then try to prove them innocent afterwards. But that's pretty much what happened to Brett Kavanaugh. Now, a similar thing happened to Clarence Thomas back in the day when he was trying to become the Supreme Court justice. And a certain somebody was the main guy that was behind it. Oh, Joe Biden. Remember the high tech lynching? That was Joe Biden. Very interesting how that works. But then when women come against Joe Biden and say, hey, you assaulted me, you touched me. Oh, all of a sudden, the evidence ain't really there. It's kind of thin evidence. I don't know if we really, you know, I'm not really believing this. I, I don't take it too seriously. It's obvious how the mainstream media and the Democratic establishment, basically the same thing, treat sexual assault allegations when they are against a Republican versus a Democrat. It's not the same. And if we're going to treat these things very seriously, let's do that all the time. Let's not, let's not have it be different depending upon your political affiliation. Matt, let me now, he's also been questioned about uh, how he's touched women and girls uh, over the years. A lot of it caught on camera. Um, the caressing, the kissing, and, and, and smelling women's hair and so on. Um, making remarks about other men's wives. Have a listen. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got very good taste. Like your father. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. I have very good taste. <laughs> Well, it's become such a joke that he's even been lampooned by the country's most famous satirical show, Saturday Night Live. There's no need to worry anymore. Daddy's here, America. I see you. I hear you. I sniff you. And I hug you from behind. He's been asked to apologize, but is quite reluctant to admit doing anything with any bad intention, anything wrong. Nancy Pelosi wants you to say, I'm sorry that I invaded your space. Sorry I invaded your space. I mean, I, I, and I, I'm sorry this happened. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I'm not sorry in the sense that I think I did anything that was intentionally designed to do anything wrong or be inappropriate. Now, John, uh, Joe Biden has put out a video trying to explain his behavior over the years. He says it's completely innocent. He's a man of the people. He's a tactile politician. He believes in getting in amongst the crowds. You've met him, as you say, on a couple of occasions. Is that what you've noticed? Well, again, he's very personable. Um, you know, has he gotten close to the line? He may have. Um, I think when appropriate, he's, he's uh, apologized. But I think we need to be fair. Um, it's not just a Democrat or a Republican issue. To me, I know this is about Joe Biden, but our president certainly is no saint when it comes to relationships with women. And I think that uh, as politicians, certainly for me, having been a politician, I'm very respectful of women. I certainly give women, when they make accusations, the benefit of the doubt. And uh, so we as a people, we as Americans, we as politicians, we should do a much better job than we're doing right now. So let's be fair. It's not just criticizing Joe Biden, who may have come close to the line. The president of the United States really has not only come close to the line, but he also has crossed the line on many occasions, in my opinion. Well, of course, Joe Biden has promised to pick a woman running mate, and we'll find out for sure in August. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the main contenders then. In fourth place, according to the bookies, it's the former presidential hopeful Elizabeth Warren. Next is President Obama's former national security advisor, Susan Rice. Val Demings comes in next, that she's Orlando's first female police chief. And in the top spot, by some margin, another former presidential hopeful and California senator, Kamala Harris. John, who do you think he's going to pick in the end? I think that Kamala Harris is probably the most palatable, meaning she has the temperament, she has a pedigree in terms of being a senator, uh, as well as um, attorney general in the state of uh, California. She is a product of what's called a historically black college. She's also very present with a sorority, sorority called Alpha Kappa Alpha. So she not only, in a, my opinion, can appeal to black voters, she can appeal to, to uh, women voters. And I think that she is a good complement to uh, Joe Biden. And as President Obama has often said in selecting a vice presidential nominee, that person should address whatever weaknesses the president may have. Anthony, you don't think she's a, a good choice for running mate or a good balance for the ticket. Why not? Well, I mean, the most obvious thing is that she did not do very well when she was running for president. You know, she didn't do well at all. And then she has a spotty record as well as a prosecutor in California. 
Okay, she was threatening a lot, parents up for the kids being truant from school. Um, I think it was at least one or two innocent or allegedly innocent black men that were locked up under her as a prosecutor in California. Such a pretty uh, spotty track record. I think Amy Klobuchar will get it because she did decently during the presidential run, and then he'll be able to capture some of the Midwest, the white woman vote. Uh, if it was going to be Kamala Harris, then she would have performed better when she was running for president. She didn't do well. Neither did, do, not, neither did Cory Booker. Neither did any of the racial minorities for some reason. The Democratic Party, again, said they're the party of the racial minority and the little guy, but I can't really tell. You have a 77-year-old white man who is leading the pack, and then the top VP picks are going to be white men and or women. So I don't really see the diversity there. But I think it'd be Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris didn't do well when she was running, and she would not necessarily perform well as a vice president. She would not help Joe Biden at all. She also has uh, some beef with him going back many, many years to when she was a child. Uh, during that uh, primary, when she was up on the dais there with Joe Biden, uh, she had some rather scathing remarks about him and about his record. Let's have a listen. It was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Uh, John, can you just explain what busing was uh, back in, in those days and why she was complaining about Joe Biden's record? Yeah, so, uh, Matt, both, um, both of us, uh, Anthony and I, are, are, are products of the South. I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, and I certainly experienced busing where I was bused, put in a yellow bus from my neighborhood to go to a white school uh, 20 miles from my house, uh, ripped away, and it was not the most pleasant experience, uh, but it was designed to what's called force integration, and it wasn't pleasant, but it was designed to be a way to integrate um, uh, the school system in Jacksonville, Florida. So Kamala Harris certainly uh, resurrected the feelings of people like myself who grew up in that era. However, I will say that Politics and running for elected office is a competitive process, and you 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 do what you can to win, and that's what Kamala Harris is trying to do. But the other thing is, at the end of the day, you kiss and make up. And so was she, Kamala Harris was she and Joe Biden. But John, was she complaining that Joe Biden was against busing, against integration or forced integration, as you might put it? Yeah, listen, look, he he does not have a flawless record. Um, but you're talking about not just 30 years ago, but 40 and 50 years ago, 40 years ago. And so we're going to forgive his th mind thought, mind think, mindset, some of his sayings that happened 40 years ago, because that was sort of commonplace in terms of conversation back then. But to me right now, the voters are looking at the Joe Biden of today. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden, who was also very supportive of our most favorite president, Obama, and his desire to move his nation forward. And so I'm not as concerned about what was said back then, what he may have done back then. I'm more concerned about today and what direction this country is going in. We're Anthony, headed in a very... Anthony, you see it rather differently, don't you? You look at Joe Biden's opposition to busing as him being in favor of segregation. Oh, absolutely. He said it back then in the 70s. He said that he is against integration. He did not want his white child to be in school with your black child if you're a black person. He said that back then. So he, he was against it, and everybody knows it. It seems like we're doing a whole lot of apologizing and excusing for Joe Biden's record. You know, I always hear from the Democratic Party, look at Joe's record. It's our favorite Uncle Joe. When I look, when I look at his record, I see against integration, 94 crime bill, you know, vote for me, you ain't black. I don't see anything really that's there except for his Obama connection. And then that's not something else. I got to kind of question Barack Obama. Why would you pick this guy? Out of everybody that's out there that you could have picked to be the vice president, why him? 
what did he accomplish that was positive when he was a senator in Delaware? I don't really see anything that he did. Nothing. He, you know, has a spotty record with women, spotty record with race, not any kind of political accomplishments that were positive except for the crime, which is negative. So I really don't see it. Um, he meant what he said. He said what he said. And I think that people are starting to realize that this is who Joe Biden is, which people are just leaving, walking away from that particular side of the aisle because they don't like what they see. Well, Anthony, Brian Logan and John Eves, we have run out of time, unfortunately, but thank you both for your contributions uh, to The Nexus. And thank you at home also for watching. Remember, you can see this episode and all our previous episodes on our channel on YouTube. Just type in Nexus TRT World, and then you can comment on the show or suggest topics for future programs. Until next week, then. Goodbye.